This episode of the Swoopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Mad Canadian will be in Cary uh, this... I can't believe I forgot that. <laughs> will be in Cary this week at the Barbecue and Bingo at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria. And I'm getting the day. Thursday. That's it. Thursday. Cary at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria from 4 to 7 o'clock. Uh, just, just one this week, so be sure to get out to the OLC Shrine Cafeteria this Thursday at 4 to 7 to get some of that sweet, sweet, good barbecue from the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they are the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by... The Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is an Ohio base, fresh roast to order, fair trade certified, USDA organic, small batch. I already said roast to order. I'll say it again because it's so important. Roast to order, veteran owned coffee company. That's right. This is a marine owned coffee company. Um, all of their beans are imported straight from farms, directly from farms in places like Colombia, Brazil, Uganda, Honduras, Peru, Ethiopia, Indonesia, and other far off lands. And again, these are all fair trade certified, which ensures that you're getting the most moral, highest integrity beans you can possibly get. And what else would you expect by a marine owned, veteran owned, Ohio based company? Am I right? Uh, and not only that, but all of the beans, as I said before, are fresh roast to order. So you are then getting the freshest possible roast. And if you have them do your bean grinding for you, the freshest possible grind that you could possibly get delivered straight to your doorstep. What else could you want? So find your new favorite coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. How was everyone's weekend? Not a stressful weekend, right, Jared? No, no, I've I've been totally stress free. Not a not a care in the world, Kyle. Not a not a gosh darn care in the world. <laughs> All right. Well, let's not waste any more time. Uh, we got a lot to talk about with this um this weekend's game. So let's get into it, Jared. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I uh, can't complain, as you would say, Jared. So how are you doing? <laughs> I'll complain. I will complain all day. I'm not gonna, but I could. I might, but I'm not. You want to you throw, throw a yellow flag in there? No, we don't. Listen, we don't complain about refereeing on this show. That is not a thing we do. Um... That being said, if we did, I do feel like it would be justified this week, uh, but we're not going to do it. That well, is what Michigan fans do. That is not what we do here. To to quote, to quote the Black Panther, we don't do that here. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to get into it here. This is our standard and grade episode where we where we um, grade out. The Ohio State performance from this last weekend, and we get to talk about their victory over Penn State, thirty-three to twenty-four. Now, Jared, if I were to tell you that Penn State would have a third down conversions of eleven for eighteen, had more first downs, had a better red zone um, touchdown percentage than Ohio State did, would you believe that Ohio State would have won the game? Uh yeah. Because I probably would have justified it by saying something along the lines of, I bet a lot of that came in the third and fourth quarter in junk time. Like, I probably just would have found a way to justify it. So, yeah, probably. Um, yeah, probably. If I'm being honest. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Ohio State had a bad third down or a bad um, red zone conversion percentage. Well, they probably scored a bunch from outside of the red zone. Yeah, I would have justified yeah. it. Yeah. But what if I said Ohio State only scored one touchdown? in their five trips. That's concerning. That, that, that I mean, that would be concerning. And it was concerning. concerning. It is. But, but yeah, either, either way, Ohio State, uh, and I want to get into that a little bit more here, but yeah, Ohio State still pulls out a victory in Columbus, 33 to 24. 
despite a very poor performance in the red zone, still had still put up good yardage. They over 300 yards passing, over 150 yards rushing for the game, and overall, this was a really good offensive performance as a whole from this Ohio State team against a, a very good de- defense from Penn State. Now, I guess we'll critique a little bit more with how Ohio State finishes those drives, but as a whole, when you look at the when you look at just the numbers as a whole here. Offensively, they they just they did well, but they got to finish. As as you see, many many people on social media or even in other um, other um, sport medias, you got you got to score touchdowns, not field goals, to win games. And that's right. that and that's and that's the key thing that I take away from this Ohio State offense is they need to finish drives. They need to finish drives, which was a which is a big concern which is a big concern in this game. And you know what? In a way, I, I'm kind of glad that they struggled in a way and seeing how they fought to win the game. And I and I think that should be the story in this game is despite how poor Ohio State has looked compared to the past few games here, they still found a way to win against a, a pretty good Penn State defensive team here. They still put up almost 500 yards total offense. Just got just got to finish those drives now. Yeah, uh, a couple of thoughts. One, I uh, to to Mark Givler's shock uh, did predict a fifty nine to ten uh, final score in this. Uh, I was wrong. I think nice. that's a I think that's a given. Um, what I was what so like where where was that gap right? Where was the gap between the final score that actually turned out and what I thought was going to happen? And to me, the the gap happened in that Clifford looked healthy. I think we got as good a Clifford as could have possibly happened. Um, I was expecting the Clifford that could barely hold his his arms out to his side and barely run that we saw against Illinois. Mm-hmm. Yep. That that's not who showed up. Uh, the the real Sean Clifford showed up. So. It did not surprise me that necessarily that Ohio State was struggling by Ohio State standards to move the ball in the first quarter. But in my mind, I saw an opportunity for Ohio State to get a bunch of drives and for them to wear the defense down over time because I was not expecting for Penn State to be able to sustain drives because I was not expecting Sean Clifford to look as good as he did. So that what's the difference just like that's the difference to me in the game I was expecting versus the game we got like that's the biggest difference and I think I feel like Ohio State fans don't necessarily want to hear that because I think Ohio State fans like to think that everything that happens or doesn't happen is directly related to what Ohio State does or doesn't do but there's another team on the field and they are all under scholarship as well and Sean Clifford had a much 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 better game than I thought he was going to be physically capable of due to his injuries yeah, no, 100%. He, he threw for 361 yards out of 52 attempts. And that said, right, and that stat right there, they had to throw the ball 52 times just to be in this game. It tells you right there about how dominant Ohio State's rush defense was in this in this game here. So um, I'm not kind of kind of jumping around here with um, who we should be grading here, but as a, as a whole, I'm I was very pleased with the defensive line and yeah. linebackers too on the rushing on the rushing uh, stop there. They held Penn State. What is it here? Thirty three attempts for twenty nine yards. Excuse me, twenty nine attempts for thirty three yards. Pretty much a yard a pop for every carry. That's that's stellar. That's stellar. Oh, don't worry, Stuart. We'll get to the criticism here in a bit. Yeah. So you want to jump right into it, Jared? You want to you want to start grading these these positions? Yeah, let's absolutely do that. All right. Where do you want to start? You want to start offense or defense here? Um, I feel like Stuart's already calling us out for being apologists. So let's start on what I think was the lesser side of the ball, uh, which surprisingly was the offense. All right. So. This is for you, Stuart. We're going to start with the slobs. Offensive line. Offensive line, man, especially that that first that first half. 
it was, it was tough sledding, tough sledding for Ohio State to to get any kind of momentum going. I'm trying to pull up the halftime stats here. Here it is. Ohio State rushing. They had 19 rushing yards in the first half. 19. They were averaging 1.6 yards per rush. Not good. Not good when this no. is supposed to be when this is supposed to be one of, if not the best, offensive line in the country, and you're only and you're only allow or you're only rushing 1.6 yards. That's not going to cut it. That's not going to cut it. And especially that first half, so much. It seemed like almost every play, all those one-on-one interactions with the offensive line to Penn State's defensive line or linebackers were getting beat. And it seemed like almost every play. And it was frustrating. It really was because we know how good this offensive line was. And they just, it was just not their night. Yeah. As, as Kyle and I have stated on these uh, standard and grade episodes in the past, we grade based off of expectation. Now that expectation has to go to both sides as Penn State does have a very good defensive line. But Ohio State really should have had the the advantage in the trench there. So on one hand, this is not George's defensive line, but it's but it's also very, very much not Maryland or Rutgers or Indiana's defensive line. So it's somewhere in between those two things, obviously. Uh, but but Ohio State's offensive line should be the best in the country, and they were not. Mm-hmm. They, so they, they, I... they weren't. So they failed to live up to, I think, even the bare minimum of their expectations. So if C is average, they were below C. Um, as Kyle stated, they didn't they barely had over one yard uh, per carry rushing in the first half. Um, the pass blocking, I thought, was sufficient considering the talent on the Penn State side. But it's it's a C minus, maybe a D plus for the offensive line. That, that's what I'm thinking about as a whole for the entire game. I probably, excuse me, I'm giving the offensive line a C minus, but yeah, 11 or excuse me, um, 19 rushing yards in the first half, but 161 yards total for the game. So they had, they had pretty much 150 yards in that second half. So they, they were able to turn that, um, turn things over, giving the ball to Henderson. It looks like, 19 times, so more than double than they did in that first half. Really, and Henderson finding ways to get, um, finding those little holes that the offensive line were able to make in that, on that rushing attack in the second half. So I'll give the offensive line a C minus based on also that they did not let up a sack as well, too. Yeah, they don't let up a sack. I thought they did, again, considering the talent level if we were if we were breaking this out into like rushing versus passing which we're not then they would get a bump higher from a passing uh, perspective but they would probably get a straight up f almost i I would say they would get a straight f from a run blocking of course you know we say that but henderson still ends the game with over five a carry yeah he still ends the game with over five a carry 152 yards um, I get how our expectations for the offensive line are sky high and they should be, but considering the talent, I feel like, you know, we're catching some crap over here in the chat, people thinking that. And I, I agree with gangland too. And I'll, I'll get, we'll get to the coaching rating too, which I yeah, think goes we, along with that, that, that we, I they, agree they with needed, you. Yes. They needed to use more of those stretch runs, try to stop running inside the tackle. They had a lot more success exactly, running off Hoosier. the edge running off the edge, doing those, um, I'm drawing a blank on the exact name, but those those zone um, slant reads where, he, yeah. where the running back just, where the running back just reads which hole to go and is able to run through there. Ezekiel Z- did a great job through that in his years at Ohio State. I wish they did more of that in this game, but yes, zone RPO, yeah. Uh, no. I wish, I, I wish they did more of that in that game, in this game. I, I, don't, want, I don't want any, I don't want the, I don't want the run pass option. It's clear that Stroud's being given a directive not to run the ball. So I feel like the, the option is all it's doing is slowing down Henderson. So no. Yeah. It, yeah. Yes. It, thank you, Austin. 
Yep. All right, tight tight ends here. Tight ends finished the game with four receptions and over sixty yards in this game. So yeah, I, th- I, I, think Ra- I, I think Austin's over under was five and a half. So, yeah, close there, close there. I, yeah, I, I agree, and Stuart. That, that was that was my grade. I, I give the tight ends I, a B. I, th- I think I thought that's they generous. Did. I think Rucker I, I, fumbles I the did. ball on his first reception. Uh, the the lack of run blocking also has to be attributed to the tight ends. Um, I think, I think a B is generous. I think it's, I think it's a straight C. Okay. Just because my, just because I give grades that we don't agree on doesn't mean my grading stinks, Stuart. (laughs) All right. So we're going to average that. We'll just say a C plus. We'll we'll do, we'll do C plus then, Jared. Okay. All right. Wide receivers here, Jared. Wide receivers as a whole, again, if I'm including tight ends here, we're not including um, tight ends. They okay, different... not including tight ends. So if I take out tight ends, minus 60, so, and then those are running backs there. So about 250 yards for the game. About two, yeah, about almost 250 yards for the game for these yeah, wide receivers. Smith and Jimba, 6'4", 97. Wilson, 7'4", 82. Uh, Alave, 3 for 44. Um, only Alave gets the touchdown. Yeah, and that, that was that was really surprising seeing Stroud only in the receivers only having one touchdown in this game. I I thought that was really surprising. Um, not not really many drops that I can really think of in this game. I thought overall the wide receivers did well for what they were able to do. Um, again, not there, there's a part of me wanting to say more to that, but I'm kind of holding back, Jerry, based off like what you said at the beginning of the show uh <laughs> but for but what for the wide receivers are, are you do? suggesting maybe that the opposing team was slightly handsy and not getting punished for it sure sure okay. yes but I, i'd probably give the in our e- expectations with these receivers too i'd probably give them like a b minus in this game yeah uh, i want to go a tad bit lower austin says uh they're playmakers but they you know, they weren't making plays, but they were playmakers. But I don't know how true that is, Austin. Um, the one touchdown Olave may, uh, ran a great route on. Um, Smith and Jimba had an amazing play where he grabbed the ball over the middle of the field and turned it into a ton of yards. Um, I don't know how <laughs> true that is. Uh, especially when you say- consider the struggle, the larger struggle of the offense in play here and the incredible and tal- uh, the incredible talent that was the Penn State secondary. Um, and quite frankly, C.J. Stroud not having his best day, the offensive line not having their best day. Um, and, I, and I think, too, going along the same lines with that, Jared, too, if you saw, especially in that first half as well, you saw C.J. Stroud throwing off of his back foot. He's not able to really plant and lean forward into his throw because he just didn't have the time there. And it, because of the offensive line really collapsing and C.J. Stroud getting rid, rid of the ball a lot sooner than he's wanting to, not being able to throw it the way that he wants to throw it to. So I think a lot of that has to go into that. So yeah. B minus C plus. For the wide receivers, I, I agree with that. Yeah, I think I think uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say B minus. Okay, running backs, running backs here mentioned Henderson over 150 yards for the game, over five a carry, definitely a lot lower average than what you're used to with with Henderson. But take it for what this game was with Penn State being a probably the best defense Ohio State has played this year. Uh, no, uh, without question. I I probably give I probably give um the running backs probably a B minus as well too, especially the for the second half with how Henderson ran that ball, yeah. being able to make guys miss, break tackles. Um, I I thought I thought in the second half it was it was much much better, but still not still not up to what I was hoping to see. But I'll give him like a same thing with the wide receivers, probably C plus B minus. Yeah, and, and I kind of want to stray more towards the B, uh, and I, and I say that because, like, I, I don't feel like there were holes for Henderson to run in. Um, you know, when when we give Henderson a ton of credit, we have to acknowledge that the offensive line helps him. When Henderson isn't performing, that's it's so 
152 yards and a 5.4 average. These are good numbers. Um, so may maybe we're we maybe we're crossing into spoiled Buckeye fan territory here. Um, maybe our expectations were too high, and I I raise my hand and acknowledge I was part of that. Um, yeah, I agree, um, Zach. I I. I think this is strong numbers that, against a good defense. Gangland yeah. says, yeah, I agree. Zach, this is the kind of game that I think this team needed. They needed, yeah. they needed to be able to fight through, um, fight through everything that's going on in the game, tight game. They were losing and coming back to score 17 straight points and just, just a continuous fight till the end. Uh, this uh, is the yes. type of game that they needed. Absolutely, Hoosier. Preparation for Georgia. I mean, should Ohio State meet Georgia? You needed this game to realize what your flaws were when yes. facing someone of this talent level in which Penn State does have on their defense. Yeah. Um, maybe, Stuart, Georgia might dominate this offensive line. Um, if If they had played last night, they would have. Now, the good news is that won't, if that happens, it won't happen for another two months. There's time. Yep. All right, Jared, quarterback, CJ Stroud, 22 for 34, over 300 I just want to yards. say, by the way, that I wanted the running back grade higher than what you had it because I thought Henderson played incredibly well when the hole was there and when the opportunity was well. I think it should be more like a B plus. Okay. All right. I'll average it to a B then. Uh, quarterback, CJ Stroud, 22 for 34. 305 yards for the game, has a touchdown, zero interceptions, nine yards average per completion. Uh, I would probably say, um, uh, I'd probably give him the same grade as Henderson, probably a B as well. Definitely some throws that he wish he had back. Um, but granted, with what we mentioned before, same thing with the running back with offensive line, not playing well, not giving him as many yards. Yeah. And making an unnecessary 80 yard sprint as well. <laughs> Speaking of the refs, just, I mean, I feel, I feel like I can complain about that one only because it ended up not counting, but that wasn't I mean, even I close. I mean, I understand that. Like he didn't hear the whistle. So he's running. No, 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 no. There was no whistle. That, that was the ref's fault. They let that go, even though it was so plainly obvious so plainly obvious that it two wasn't bounces two bounces anyway not complaining about refs we're not doing all right. it all right b i give i give stroud a b over grading with everything and expectations yada yada b i want to go lower personally because i think the i think the I, I think we have to adjust our expectations as the season goes on and had he put this performance up in september i'd be tempted to give him an a but the expectations yeah. increase. Uh, therefore, the, the curve he is graded on gets tougher. I think it's I think it's like a C plus. I, I think he didn't throw any interceptions. That's good. Um, he throws for 305 yards, which is good. Um, didn't take any unnecessary sacks. He did unnecessary. He did unnecessarily run out of bounds on a couple occasions. Um, the. And again, he, well, that, well, if you, if you those remember first that one, quarter, those that, first quarter that, jitters came back a lot. He was not great in the first quarter, although he found it. Um, but if you remember that one, he ran out of bounds that, that, that came back anyway, because that was, he, he saw the penalty that came. Um, I think it was like defensive holding and he, he ran out of bounds cause he saw that. So I'm not, I'm not going to grade him on what you said with that, with that play. Uh, there. Did Ty, did Ty sign up? Is that, is that a thing that just happened? Let me check my Gmail. Um, sorry, Kyle, go ahead. <laughs> All right. Um, well, so we regrade offensive line is C minus tight end C plus wide receiver B minus running back B and a quarter and the quarterback C plus. Now for the defense, we'll get to right after our ad break. And as Jared's looking that up, I will, I will go ahead and talk about the mad Canadian real quick here. Oh. Uh, the mad Canadian barbecue company, mm -hmm will be in Cary, Ohio this Thursday from 4 to 7 at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria for some barbecue and bingo. Uh, this is the only time that the Mad Canadian will be out this week. So if you 
hunkering for some of that good old barbecue from the Mad Canadian. Be sure to head out to Cary this Thursday from 4 to 7 and tell them the, the fellows over at the Sleuthcast sent you. Um, check out the Mad Canadian social media sites, Facebook, Twitter, for more information about him and his food truck and where he's heading to next. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company for the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Let's talk a little bit. We talked about why you should buy from the Iron Bean Coffee Company, um, but let's talk t- about some of the individual coffees on the last episode I did. We talked a lot about some of the flavored coffees. Let's take a look at some of the non-flavored coffees, some of our standard coffees. Uh, all, well, I was about to talk about the whole shebang, but the whole shebang appears to be sold out at the moment. So uh, keep an eye on the website for when that returns. Um, the Let's talk about the Rocco. How about that? Let's talk about the Rocco. The Rocco is available in both medium and dark roast. So you get your option there. Um, let's see. Everything you expect from the Rocco, uh, but this one, I'm, I'm reading strictly from the uh, dark Rocco here. Uh, taken through a fire just a little longer uh, to produce a deeper body and a rich experience. Uh, this is an Ethiopian natural processed coffee. Um, he says there's something pretty special about an Ethiopian natural when it's at its best. Um, and they are excited to offer just such a coffee, bright, sweet with a very diverse flavor. Um, it has soft fruit, citrus, herbal, chocolate, malt, uh, and there's a bit of smoke in there. Um, it's a tricky, it's a tricky coffee to roast, um, a classic Ethiopian natural, um, some cultivated beans, some wild beans, a diversity of uh, colors. Guys, I think what he's trying to say is, is that it's a damn fine coffee and that not any, not just anyone can roast it. Um, it's, it's, it's a great flavor. Uh, it tastes smooth, never bitter, has subtle notes of strawberry, blueberry, and toffee. Again, not a flavored coffee. Those are just the natural notes coming from the beans. Uh, it takes a great amount of care with these beans. Um, and it comes through, believe me, it comes through in the cup. So uh, go ahead and check out your new favorite coffee. Go find your new favorite coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roasters. All right, Jared, defense. Defense, so like the offense, we talked about the line. So let's start with the defensive line. Now, Jared, do we want to split this up into ends and tackles again, or do we just want to keep them into the same? I think we're I think we're okay. I think we're safe here keeping them the same as I thought both performed very well. Um I don't necessarily have uh I don't I don't feel the need to separate them this week. All right. So my thoughts again I'm going to go opposite what you just said though, but I thought defensive tackles defensive tackles I thought just played extraordinary. I give them a, a, I would give the defensive tackles an A. The defensive ends probably more like a C+. Plus or a C just, I, I did not see or, or yeah. Defensive tackle is an S level. Yeah. <laughs> or that too. Um, but I'm just not seeing the pressure that we're used to ex- expecting to see from the defensive ends here. How many times in that game, Jared, did we see just Sean Cl- or that we saw? Um, well, I'm Yeah. Sean Clifford just had all day to throw the ball and he's able to just wait to get the wait for the wide receivers to get open. And there's just no pressure. I felt like that happened so much in this game. So I, if you're asking me to grade it as a whole, I'll average it to, to probably a B then for the defensive line. Okay. Um, I, I don't know. I thought they they aren't getting home when they're just rushing three or four. But I, I think, again, if we're grading based off of expectation, they haven't been doing that all year. So the the expectation for the defensive ends to some extent should be lowered. But it should be said that Tyreek Smith got a sack. JTT got a sack. Um, so uh, half of your sacks did come from the defensive ends. Um, Antoine Jackson was the only player or the only defensive tackle to get a sack. And it was a half sack. Um, 
but again, if you start looking at like your tackles for loss and all of that, um, you do start to see a bit what Kyle's talking about here as that is dominated by the defensive tackles. Um, but also, again, to defend what Kyle is saying and maybe to defend Kyle's point a bit, um, you also just have to watch the games and use a bit of an eye because the s- statistics don't always come through for defensive players, especially uh, defensive linemen. Because uh, like if you look at the stat line, uh, Haskell Garrett had no tackles, <laughs> no sacks, no tackles for loss. Um, basically nothing in the stat line. But if you watch the game, you know how important he was to it. Um, so what would you give the defensive line as a whole then? Um, I I agree with you that I was expecting more of a pass rush, but at the same time, they did very well against the running game. Uh, so I would say a straight B. Very well. Yeah, I would say a straight well. B. Again, only letting up 33 yards on 29 attempts, 1.1 per carry. That that has to, that has to say a lot about about this defensive line. And I think if I looked at um, the stats for for the month of October here, best best rushing defense in the country in the month of October. They're only well, allowing 50, 58 yards a game. Fifty eight, Jared. Yeah. That's extraordinary. That's extraordinary. It is. But I, I think that might also be a bit, a tad bit of a statistical anomaly, considering in all of those games except the Penn State game, they went up big early, which just forces teams. So, like, the offense deserves some credit for that stat because when you go mm-hmm. up that big that early, um, the teams basically have to sort of abandon running the ball. Yep. Okay. Fair enough. Linebackers, Jared. I'll let you start with this one. Linebackers. How would you grade the linebackers? Uh, Ronnie Hickman has another great game. So if we're including him with the linebackers, he was the star of the defense, um, leads the team in both tackles and solo tackles. Um, I thought that you... I, again, I don't want to get into the refereeing of it, but like Steel Chambers, I thought had a great game. I thought Ohio State missed him a lot when he got removed from the game. Um, I thought Cody Simon is is playing well. Um, and he's not flashing to me the way he flashed earlier in the year. But again, if if we if we're talking about the the run defense, the linebackers also deserve and need credit in that. Um, I think that. Uh, Chambers, no, our our defensive MVP is absolutely Ronnie Hickman, but I like Chambers a lot. Don't get me wrong. Um, I don't think the line, the linebackers still aren't playing well in coverage to me, except maybe Steel Chambers. Again, I think to me, it's Simon and Chambers. Those are, those are your two like dedicated linebackers that need to be on the field a lot. And I think you are, I agree with you, Stuart, but it would have also changed without Hickman. Um, yep. So what did you, what did you grade the linebackers in this game? as a whole uh it's it, it's kind of the same as the the defensive line because uh, on one hand you have to give them credit for what they did against the run but also give them you know take away points for their role in the passing game not being very good uh, the passing defense not being very good both from a pass rush and a pass coverage standpoint yep so what'd you grade them uh like a B minus or a C plus. Okay. We're we're on the same page. I was I was thinking of a C C plus, just pretty much the same that you you were thinking. I thought, yes, the linebackers did really well plugging up the hole on that rushing um rushing attack there or rushing stopping the rush there. But man, when we saw them drop back into the zones, and there was a couple of plays, especially um, I don't want to call out names, but there there are certain linebackers where they just seemed like they were lost. They were they were lost in in zones there, and just so many holes open. It, it just not not to the standard that I would like to see this linebacker crew. Yeah, and it, it gets to the point where we are talking about how bad the pass defense was, but I'm still end up going to give a really nice grade to the corners, um, mm-hmm. and I think. Well, how do you justify that, Jared? I think a lot of the passes were being thrown in the linebacker zones of the defense. Uh, 
I, the linebackers have gotten pretty good on the run side of things, but they're still uh, at a complete deficiency for the, the, in, in the pass coverage, in the pass zones. Uh, there's, there's an issue there and it's not, it's not gotten, it's gotten better. I don't want to say it's not gotten better. It has gotten better, but it hasn't gotten good enough yet. Yeah. All right. Defensive backs here. Start with the corners. I thought the corners had a great game personally. Mm-hmm. So just, just some stat notes here. Dotson did have 11 catches for 127 yards. Washington nine for 108 yards. Those are your, the two obvious um, leaders for the Penn state team able to find themselves open I think a lot of it had to do with the coverage that Ohio State was in and credit to Sean Clifford to and the um, Penn State offensive line to give Clifford time to read the zone and throw it into those openings to get Dotson and especially Washington to seem like Washington finds those openings so easily in that game. But if they're playing man to man. I thought I thought the corners did very well. They did very well. And so I'd, I'd probably give, I'd probably give the corners like a, maybe like a B minus B. I, I thought, I thought, I thought really? they did pretty well. Yeah. But a B minus, I feel like we've trashed the, I feel like we've trashed some of the position groups and then given them a B minus C plus. Um, all right, that doesn't I'll, feel I'll, consistent I'll, to me. All right. I'll, I'll stick with a B then I'll stick with a B. I thought, I thought they did pretty well, but, but I, still, I, I honestly think it's an A minus B plus. I, I think most of the damage that was done to Ohio State in the passing game was done in the middle zones, uh, which we can put on the safeties, uh, which we can put on the linebackers. But I thought Ohio State did a really good job defending the outside areas of the defense. Uh, and then you also have to uh, talk about, you know, uh, you had uh, Cam Brown get a key interception towards the end of the game. Um, I, I thought I thought Ohio State's corners played really well, which again I understand might be weird considering the amount of passing yards given up. Well, but I've already explained that. Well, in the safeties, I would give the safeties like your rating, like a like an A minus. I thought the safeties played very very well in this game. I thought one of the safeties played really really well, and I think I'm gonna leave. I think I'm gonna leave that at that. I think that there's a bit of a the. Uh, <sighs> I wouldn't mind them. I'm trying to be really nice right now. I'm really trying to be very nice right now. Um, I think that they need to uh, reevaluate who is getting how many snaps at safety. Um, yes, chat. Yes, chat. Um, <laughs> I think they need to reevaluate who's playing safety for them right now. Um, and I'm, yeah. It's I'm I'm trying to be nice. I'm I'm really trying so, Okay, all right. So we're gonna move away this, but what would you grade the safeties, Jared? Um I don't know, like a B. Again, we're talking like the middle zones. Um they they feel they they feel real feel feel real real loose right now. And again, a lot of that's on the linebackers. Um yeah, a lot of that's on the linebackers, I would say. And I think, yeah, I don't know. It's All right. I, I'm trying to be nice and I'm 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 fine. I'm not I'm not, I'm not finding ways to say what I want to say right now. All right. I'm, so we'll, we'll stay with B it. plus then. We'll stay B plus. All right. Um special teams here. Special teams. All right. Um whatever. Um a bunch of field goals were kicked, which I understand is not what we want, but that does not change the fact that Ruggles uh, was perfect on them. Um, well, they all went in anyway. <laughs> um, they punted okay. Um, I feel like a lot of balls were being dropped on the 10 when they could have potentially maybe been dropped a little bit further in. Um, but overall, I thought the special teams played fine. Um it's acceptable, yeah. but it's not, you know, well, here's the thing, Stuart. I'm, I'm like, do they deserve the A plus or do they deserve the A? 
So if they you never... maybe if you get a couple of those pins in there, I might have bumped them up to an A plus, but they, they, they didn't. Were... So I think I'm going to keep it in an A. They will never get an A plus until. Until oh, I something forgot. happens, Jared. No, you <laughs> will never give them an A plus. Yes, that's what and, I said. I won't. Yes. <laughs> All right. So I'd, I'd probably give a special teams like like an A minus. I thought they did well. I okay. thought they did well. And coaching, Jared. Yeah. Um, with all due respect to Matt Barnes, who I think has been put into a very difficult situation this year by being forced to revamp take over and revamp a defense in the middle of the season um i'm giving him some excuses right now because i think he deserves it i i I do um because he's been put into a very difficult position and he's done a very good job with it um he was out coached this game um i i think that they they needed to be blitzing more because they weren't getting home with four and why not blitz the linebackers? Cause they aren't doing crap in coverage anyway. Um, so in with all in, but they, but at the same time they were doing really good things, doing um, a bunch of stunts up front that I thought were working really well. And they did blitz at times. Um, I again would like to see maybe a bit more diversity in the pass defense. Um, you know, I think early in the season, Ohio State ran pretty much exclusively a man, and that was bad. And then last night, it felt like they were running, and I know they weren't. There were man coverages mixed in, but it felt like they were running almost exclusively zones when those were getting picked apart. So yep. um, he was getting especially outcoached a bit, downs. but yes, especially on third downs. Um, he was getting outcoached a bit, but I don't want to trash him too hard because, again, he's been put into an incredibly difficult position this year, and I thought he's done a good job with it. On the all offensive side of the ball, like the 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 run off guard wasn't working. Knock it off. Like what what are you doing? Where where were the play? They, Penn State was selling out, and and I and I, I'm giving no excuses here, because I believe Kevin Wilson's the highest paid assistant on the team. I mean, Kerry Combs actually might be, but thoughts have already been given there. Ryan Day is the offensive guru. I, I give I'm giving Matt Barnes a ton of excuses and a ton of outs and a and a ton of qualifiers. I'm not giving those same outs and those qualifiers and those excuses to the offensive side. It's been a cohesive unit of coaches. Uh, those are highly paid coaches. Your head coach is an offensive guru. The offensive side has a lot more coaches, which is a problem than the defensive side of the ball. And at some point, it's not time to clean any house. It's a very good crew of people. But at some point, like you had the the inside run wasn't working. Yeah, it wasn't working. I I mean, I hear I hear what you're saying. Yes, and I I I agree with most of the things that you're saying. But and and I think Herbster even mentioned it in in the broadcast too of like. You can't you can't change how you do your defense. The 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 kind of overall change is something that gets done during spring camp. Right. But for what Ohio State's able to do, yes, I I think they're doing a I think they're doing a pretty good job on Absolutely it. Absolutely, they are. But the off- offensive, but offensively though, and I I agree. Like just the play calling needs to change. Like oh hey yeah hey, we're only getting one and a half yards if that on for running it down the middle like oh hey we're actually getting six seven yards running on the edge there Hmm, maybe we should call maybe a little bit more of those in the future a little bit more of those but also like a little more play action i feel like and they they overran it last year so maybe that's why they're hesitant to do it this year but you have a quarterback who is a pocket passer, but who is athletic. Mm-hmm. Why Why yeah. are we not rolling him out and letting him throw those easy, you know, six to eight yard out patterns? Yep. Where so Why I, Why weren't we throwing the ball to Ruckert more on play actions? Why, where, where were those plays at? If Penn State's going to sell out to stop the run, where are those play action plays? Where are the yeah. play actions... And I'm not saying you have to bomb it deep. 
I mean, you can, especially when the offense isn't working, who cares going off a little bit schedule yep. um, so I, I, by, I, I, by missing give, a deep pass. I'd give uh, the, the coaching, I'd give the coaching staff a C. I, I want to sep- I want to separate them. I, w- I really want to separate them offensive and defensive. I, Again, Matt, because Matt Barnes deserves a ton of credit and all all the things I already said, Matt. So I like Matt Barnes in, in the the defensive side of the ball. I'd like to give like a B plus. I was thinking a B for for him, and then the offense offensively a D, like it's yeah. just a D, which is yeah B and Matt a Barnes B to also D. deserves criticism absolutely, but the task he was given and the experience he has which is not much as an actual defensive coordinator and the amount of money he's getting paid compared to the other people on the team, the expectations have to be different. You understand that he has never done what he's doing before and he's doing a better job of it than the person he replaced. Yep. Who was paid a lot more money, who has a lot more experience. All right, so we Matt the Barnes was put in an impossible situations so and situation. Off, defensive line overall got a B rated linebackers as a C plus corners and safeties a B plus special teams an A minus and averaging the coaches a C D for the offense and B for the for the defense. Stewart asks, do we temper expectations for an Ohio State coach? Is that where we are? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that that's where we are on the defensive side of the ball right now. I uh, sorry. Right. Yes. Yes. All right, Jared. Let's get into some ask Sloopcast questions here. Now, that's that now, does not carry over into next season, Stuart. But you yeah. do have to temper the expectations for this season based off of the challenges given. You you can't just blindly expect everyone to be great all of the time. It's not that's not realistic. You have to, you have to be realistic with your expectations. You don't change your defensive scheme and rearrange your defensive coaching staff mid season, hand it over to someone who's never done it before mid season and expect the defense to be fixed overnight. That's just not a fair expectation. Mm-hmm. All right, Jared, some questions here from our, from our uh, sloop cats here. Uh, despite his obvious o- awesomeness is Olave the easiest weapon for a defensive scheme to take away i want i wouldn't say so i mean <laughs> look at like at ohio state they know that their their biggest threat was dodson and he still had 11 receptions 127 yards and a rushing touchdown as well now it's it's not the easiest to to um to take away well especially considering all the other talent n- Outside of Henderson, if you want to sell out and stop the run, you can do that. But I, there, Ohio State has too many weapons on the offensive side of the ball. Taking one player away shouldn't matter. Yep. Um, and as far as last night goes, Olave is your deep threat. Wilson is your possession guy. And Stroud was not getting the clean pockets that he has been used to getting this month. So therefore the deep possession guy wasn't getting as many looks because it takes longer to run those plays, to run those routes. Yeah. So to me, that's, that's why. Austin formation asks us who, who is the best player on the defense right now? Ronnie Hickman done period. Yep. No, no, no more, no other discussion needed Hickman. Yes. Um, Austin also asks, is Whipler the weak link on, on the offensive line in this yes. game? Yes. Yeah, I almost want to revisit our offensive line grade because of, quite frankly, like the snap infractions and the penalties. I don't feel like we took that into enough consideration with that grade. I don't actually want to go back, but I just want to acknowledge that maybe we should have graded the offensive line lower than we already did. Yeah, we we didn't even talk about the number. You don't replace him, Hoosier. He's he's a first year player. You stick with him. And you keep going. Uh, yep. That's not everyone is going to be a five star fourth year player all the time. That's not a realistic expectation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, Hase had 10 penalties, 74 yards this game. We didn't even talk about that. And we don't have 
time to time to get into it. But yeah, penalties was another big issue in this game too. Uh, let's see. If you had to compare Olave to a Buckeye wide receiver since 2010, who would you say he is most like? And he wants to note that he would say Olave is like uh, McLaurin. McLaurin's a is a good comp. Um, yeah, Devin Smith. I would say your, Devin Smith is a really good. Hoosier comparison. says Devin Smith. I feel like that's probably good. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I have a good answer for that. Posey's a good answer. Ooh, Posey. Yeah, good one, Zach. Although is Posey within the last ten years? Where we're 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 mm-hmm. bumping up against that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, he was okay. I'll just I'll just take your expect. Sansenbacher, um, maybe. Um, I think I think I think I think Smith no, and, no. Smith and Sansen- Posey would be better. Yeah. All right. Um, right. Stewart asks us, Jared, what was the worst offensive line performance in the past three years when it comes to blocking to penalties? Oh man, that's a big question. Yeah. Cause I, I thought, I thought last year the offensive line did really well. Um, I got, I got to look at what 2019 I, I I don't feel like I can accurately answer that question. I'll just be honest with you. We're running it over could be, on time. It could, be la- it could be last weekend or this this past weekend against Penn State. No, maybe in maybe in 2019 when Ohio State had to play uh, Penn State again. Like that that was that was not a good showing offensively as well in that game. It was a 28-17 game. So similar to similar to this game here. Like Justin Fields only had 188 yards in that game. Yeah, I would I'll probably say um, Penn State from two years ago. That that might be. That was more fumble based, maybe. Um, yeah, I just don't. I, I don't have. I'm not going to be able to accurately answer that question off the top of my head. I don't think. Yeah, uh, Stewart also asked, "Did our offensive line get exposed, or are they just bad right now?" Uh, I think the coaching staff needs to do a better job of of putting them in position to succeed. Um, again, if this is the worst Ohio State's offensive line is going to look all year, that's fine. Um, because the yeah. offense still yeah. produced. <laughs> um, that's okay, Stuart. I, I frame things horribly all the time, too. Uh, you, you, but I'm, I'm still going to give you a B minus because I'm, I'm a nice grader. <laughs> All right, Kyle, what's the next question? All right. What do we got here? Oh, uh, okay. Zach, why is, why is, um, I can bore land on this team. Stop it. He's, I, I, I acknowledge he's maybe not the player that, um, I acknowledge that he's maybe not the player that Ohio State needs, especially against a passing opponent. But let's let's be nice. Let's be nice. These are non-paid student athletes, about twenty years old. Be nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the deal with the offensive line, and how do we fix the interior run scheme? Zach asks. Uh, well, one thing: not playing Penn State will 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 be huge for that. Like this was a very good Penn State defensive line. So, but, but then the question becomes, okay, then what if you end up playing Georgia later on? Um, Mm -hmm. Michigan has a good defensive line. At least it seemed that way at times. They've been run up the middle on a lot recently. So maybe, maybe not. But like, again, if you, if you're going to play Georgia, how do you run the ball? And to me, I don't think it's as much an offensive line. Uh, Whipler's young and he'll get more experienced and he'll get better. So I'm, I'm going to throw that out there. Um, but as far as I think it was a coaching issue as much as it was anything, would you like for Ohio state to be able to just run straight down the throat of every single team they played? Yeah, of course you do. That's what you want, but that's again, not always a realistic expectation. Um, I think they needed to be more diverse in the runs they were running. And I think they needed to do a better job taking what was there. I think maybe they got a little too used to doing whatever they wanted and weren't 
doing what they needed to do and just take what Penn State was giving them. And I think that was, I think that was mm-hmm. short passes based off of uh, or run out of play action. Yep. All right. Uh, last question here, Jared. So Ty are his Hines, coaches. Ty Hines 28 in our Discord chat. Uh, why isn't CJ running the ball more? Because the coach, because the coaching staff is telling him not to. I think that's part of it. Uh, I think I again, if we go back to Justin Fields from one of the last couple, um, he has the ability to. He has the ability to run much like Justin Fields did. Although I think Justin Fields is a better runner, um, but but I do think that maybe Ryan Day might be slightly over adjusting because he he coached for Urban Meyer and he saw his quarterbacks get beaten the hell up because Urban anytime things went wrong he kind of went into this cocoon of quarterback run quarterback run quarterback run and the quarterbacks were getting injured and hurt and banged up and Ryan Day might be overcompensating in the other direction so i mean the question you really have to ask yourself and i've theorized that it's Ryan Day based off of the trend of both fields and Stroud doing it, that it's Ryan Day giving them directive to only run when absolutely necessary. And again, it might he, he might be reacting too far. Yep. All right, Jared. I yes, Stroud is, is much more athletic than Haskins. Yeah. Much, much right, more. I, I think that's all the questions we have for today. All right. Um, we're going super over, but I thought it was worth it. I don't think we wasted any time, so it's fine. Um, Kyle, uh, tonight, uh, I, again, we're running over, so I'm just going to do this super quick. You can become a patron for as little as $3 a month, and that gives you, no, Zach, that gives you the ability to join these guys during our live recordings who are down here listening to us and chatting with us and uh, trying to make me laugh while I do ad reads. Uh you can do that for as little as $3 a month, but if you want to try it before you buy it, you can still join the discord server. You won't have access to listen to the episodes live that way, but there's still a a whole lot of, uh, a whole lot of areas in the non-premium section of the discord that you can come and hang out. And we have a lot of fun. So uh, all you have to do is download the discord app to your phone. If you don't already have it and go to discord.thesloopcast.com and uh, just hang out with us. (laughs) <laughs> Ty, I hey, I would love it if Ty joined. I would love it if Ty joined. I would love it if anyone joined. But yeah. Uh, and by the way, uh, just real quick, one more thing. Make sure you are following us on YouTube because I know a lot of people listen to us on the Buckeye Scoop YouTube channel. Um, things there are, are weird right now. And I'm not saying by any means that Kyle and I have any intention to leave anytime soon or anything like that. That's not what I'm saying here. But I, I don't know what the future is holding with Buckeye Scoop at the moment. So uh, please be sure if you enjoy us and you like us that you're also following us uh, on our our channel on YouTube. Um, and you can do that. There'll be a, a thing pop up at the very end of the show where you can when where you can subscribe to us on YouTube. Um, and also join the Sloop Cats. So that's, that's it. Uh, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's Corner? Columbus Crew picked up a big, big win this past weekend against DC United. Now crew is uh, currently in ninth right now. And they're, they are two spots away and two points behind um, New York Red Bulls and DC United. who They just beat. So they have an outside chance of making the playoffs, but it's not looking good as they have right. one game left. But yeah. Big win over DC United three to one. Still, still, still that, slight edge to get to the playoffs but they need a lot of help here so yep and uh with all that being said uh tonight's ending music is by columbus based band uh from the 90s but uh that's fine i I don't mind it uh they are called defiance ohio uh and again they are from columbus that's defiance ohio is just the name of the band uh and if you stick around uh audio people if the audio people stick around, you will 
hear that song, you might already be hearing that song. Uh, podcast people, or uh, rather YouTube people, you can click the link down there at the bottom of the show um, in the show notes, and you'll be able to listen to this song live uh, on YouTube, live on YouTube. That's that's not a thing, but you'll be able to watch it. You'll be able to watch and listen to it on YouTube. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Defiance Ohio. <laughs>